Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be continuing into part 9 of what if Goku was born as a Super Saiyan. If you haven't seen part 8, there's a title card where you can go check it out and see what happened in the last part. But today we'll be going into the Majin Saiyan Saga. Will the Z Fighters of Earth be able to defend their planet? Will Bobby be able to free Boo? Will the evil Saiyans face off the good ones? For those who are interested, I own a Discord server for anyone who wants to join and talk more about Dragon Ball with me and other viewers. Maybe give out some of your own ideas of what ifs and maybe in the future I could do them. Check the link in the description down below. Before we get into the video, there's two things we need to discuss. So the first thing is the comment of the video which is from Sasha Gallagher. 1307 and they're asking what's your favorite transformation doesn't have to be a saiyan and i don't have to say my favorite transformation overall would have to be super 17 with the two 17s combining and becoming one i i enjoyed that transformation a lot it looks really cool and that's probably my favorite you know it's up there and i think this a close second would be perfect cell just those transformations with androids are just really cool another thing before we get onto the video Last video, I asked y'all what should be the names of Raditz and Kakarot's child. I seen a lot of comments saying like one of them would be called Bardock Jr. or would be named after him. And I feel like that would definitely be the case. And I would probably give that for Raditz's son since before Bardock passed away. He and Raditz had a really strong bond really spending the last like few days together before the whole cooler invasion. So I'm gonna give Raditz's son the name Bardock Jr. And for Kakarot's son, it was really between two but the comment from 1d clan underscore atx he gave the idea of jaima after the vegetable jacama which is kind of like a potato and potatoes and you know carrots are always close together so i feel like that would be a really good name for kakarot son so we got now bardock jr and jaima yeah thank y'all for all the comments i, I like some of the ideas y'all had for the names for these kids so thank y'all so much i'm gonna try more in the future to give y'all like options where it comes to Maybe giving up a character or an idea when I'm between two options for the story. So y'all can decide how the story would go on in the future. But thank y'all so much for all the comments of giving ideas for the names. And without further ado, let's dive into part 9 of what if Goku was born as a Super Saiyan. Some time would pass as on Earth, Yamcha is currently training with Krillin and his son. And the topic of the world tournament would be brought up. Trunks was interested as he wanted to fight in the tournament with the grown-ups. Later on though, he would learn that he would be fighting other kids. The idea did make Yamcha and Krillin want to enter for old time's sake back when they first became martial artists. So all three of them would enter the tournament and even Android 16 would join them. Trunks was kind of bummed out that he could only compete in the kid division and would easily win without any real effort. When it came to the grown-up division, they were excited to be competing, but there were two mysterious beings also competing in the tournament. For us, we know them as being the Supreme Kai and Kibido. Krillin would have his first match and would win without much problem, but then when it came to Yamcha, he would be facing against the Supreme Kai. He would ask Yamcha to show him his full power. Yamcha was a bit skeptical at first, not sure if it would be fair, but he wouldn't reject his request. Powering up to his full power, the Supreme Kai wouldn't be as shocked from when he would witness Gohan's power back in the canon timeline, but would think that it would be enough as he would tell Yamcha about the impending doom to his planet and that they need to leave right now to prepare for this impending doom. Yamcha was a bit confused but he didn't question him so Yamcha, Krillin, Android 16, Kibido and the Supreme Kai would prepare to leave. But Trunks would beg his father to go with him as he wants his opportunity to see how strong he has gotten. Bulma gives them an angry expression, not liking the idea, but she would command 16 to keep eyes on Trunks at all times so he doesn't get into serious danger. Trunks with excitement would leave with the others and they would all teleport to the Supreme Kai's planet, as in they would all get a full explanation of what is going on, learning about Boo, Babidi and some new forces that Babidi has acquired to his forces. They would only have a week to prepare so their training would be rather quickly. Yamcha would be focused on more as he would need the power boost more than Krillin and Krillin would just be training Trunks to make him stronger as well. With already being a good swordsman, Yamcha would be able to pull the Z sword and begin using it with ease but just as normal, he would accidentally break the sword which would release the Elder Kai and would thank him for freeing him from his prison. And as a thank you, he would offer him to do the ritual which would unlock his potential and give him a huge power boost. This was great and would quickly get to starting the ritual. A day would pass and the ritual would be done. The power boost that Yamcha received was massive as in his mystic form, his power level increased from a base of 10 million to 2 billion. Basically allowing him to have the power of using Kaioken times 20 without straining his body. They had one day left and Trunks wanted to have the same ritual that his father got. And Krillin had no problem with it as he thought it would be much better that Trunks got a power boost so that they didn't have to worry about him too much. Now with Trunks I feel like the power boost would be a bit more than just a multiplier. Given that his potential is greater than his father I would say, 
he would jump from a power level of 1 million to 5 million. After the ritual is done, they all quickly return to Earth, as they sense the army that Babri has brought and even how strong they are. Yamcha would tell Supreme Kai about the other Saiyans, saying that they might need their help with this, and then both Supreme Kai and Kibuto would teleport off to go collect the Saiyans from planet Vegeta. The four fighters would wait for Babri to head to their direction, and not long after they would come face to face with them. Yamcha and Krillin faces quickly change to Sha, realizing that the army that Babri has gotten was the evil Saiyans that Kakarot warned them about years ago. Babri commanded the Saiyans to attack these forces. Yamcha and Krillin weren't sure if they could win against these Saiyans, but they were gonna hold them off for as long as they could. Yamcha and Krillin would face off against Nappa and King Vegeta, since they were the stronger ones, while Trunks and Sixteen would fight off the other Saiyans who haven't transformed just yet. Before we continue with the story, I just wanted to state that these transformations that Nappa and King Vegeta have gotten are not as strong as Super Saiyan 4 is normally, since their base is much weaker and they only achieved it with the magical boost of Babidi. But I would say that they are stronger than the humans, but not by an ungodly amount. I would say probably around 10 billion lowballing it. When they begin battling, it is shown that the Earth Defenders would have trouble fighting them all. But with Trunks and 16 trying their best as each Saiyans are close to their power, so the Saiyans have the advantage of numbers. Trunks struggles with fighting as they are close in power with him, while 16 is a bit stronger, but it's also the fact that Trunks never got into a life or death fight before. The first Saiyan he fights, he shows confidence and is able to beat him, but once he began getting swarmed, he would show fear as he would try his best to dodge and run, as he is able to barely. But 16 would try his best to protect Trunks, but it also means that he is taking most of the attacks himself and would begin to get damaged. Yamcha would see how his son is freezing and he would get worried about his safety, as he would try to head to him but Nappa kept getting in his way now allowing him to go. Yamcha and Krillin were having trouble on their own as they are weaker than the Saiyans, and the only thing letting them be somewhat on par with them is the fighting style and strategies that they use. Yamcha and Krillin would both be pushing to their limits, as if they don't, they wouldn't last long enough for the backup to arrive, both activating Kaioken going to levels that they haven't reached, pushing their bodies to the limit. It was mainly straining on Yamcha as he had both Mystic Form and the Kaioken stacked together. We hopped to Planet Vegeta as the Supreme Kai finally arrived as he teleported right in front of King Raditz and Kakarot. They instantly go on guard, but Supreme Kai warns them that their friends from Earth are in danger and they require their assistance immediately. Quickly, Raditz would gather up Kakarot, Turles, Broly, Tarbos, and Granola as they all head to Earth. But he looks at Kakarot and they didn't say a word, but if this was a threat that was too much for them and they cannot deal without the ritual, they can't do it without Vegeta. Back to the battlefield, Yamcha and Krillin are beginning to lose the fight as they are getting beat on and not being able to defend themselves as their bodies are completely ruined and 16 is getting destroyed by the Saiyans, which only left Trunks left scared and in tears as he sees the body of his father mentor and guardian. Yamcha yells at Trunks to run and get to safety, but he doesn't move as he is in pure fear. Babidi was pleased as he has had enough energy for Boo, so he and Dabura would leave to create a safe place to resurrect Boo, as he tells the Saiyans that as they can do whatever to the protectors of Earth. They give an evil grin to Trunks as they charge up an energy blast, ready to kill him off, as once they shoot it, Trunks would cover his face, still unable to move, until the key blast is deflected away. As he looks up to see the other Saiyans, as he crawls away, scared, but Trunks will make sure that he is safe, as they are here to help out his friends. Kakron and Raditz locks eyes with Nappa and King Vegeta, and instantly go into their Super Saiyan forms, ready to fight, but Kakron does warn his brother that these two, in whatever transformation they have, they are stronger than the two of them. Raditz would ask Yamcha if they had the Dragon Balls together, and he does says that they do back at the Capsule Corp. He would tell Yamcha to tell his son to wish for another Saiyan named Vegeta to this planet, and begin fighting the other two Saiyans. The others would fight off the other Saiyans, as Yamcha would call over his son, telling him to take the head of 16 back to his mother, and use the Dragon Balls to wish for a Saiyan named Vegeta to the planet, and to head out to the lookout to get some Sensu Beans. He understood and would quickly leave with 16. Raditz would begin fighting against King Vegeta, as he would mock Raditz, saying that he was hoping to fight Bardock as he wanted revenge for what he did. As this angers Raditz, saying that now he is the king, as his father has passed. King Vegeta scoffs at this, calling Bardock weak, and this truly enrages Raditz, as he powers up further and sends King Vegeta crashing onto the ground, as he sends a barrage of attacks right at him. Kakarot is able to hold off Nappa, but during their fight, he could not stop thinking if this was a level above Super Saiyan that his father told him about. He believes that it looks like a form of the Akari state that the others have. With the other four, they are able to handle the evil Saiyans pretty well, even with the fact that they are outnumbered. With the training that Granola did during the huge time skip, he was able to put his Cerulean abilities to greater use and manages to take out multiple Saiyans with ease as he has gotten better with hitting the vital points of people, but since it was an army of Saiyans, they couldn't lend a hand to Kakarot or Raditz. Trunks would make it to his home and quickly find his mother to catch her up to speed. She shows a terrifying look, seeing Andrew 16 destroyed, her son hurt, and her husband badly injured. She would quickly get the Dragon Balls and would summon Shenron, as Trunks would make the wish of bringing Vegeta to the planet, 
as his friends need his help. Vegeta would be summoned after speaking to Shenron, but is confused to see two random humans in front of him. But he barely is able to remember Bulma as he asks what is going on. Trunks hurriedly would say what is going on and would point out to the direction of the battle. Vegeta's face would instantly grow angry as he senses his father's energy as he quickly begins to fly over to the battlefield. Then Trunks would fly off to the lookout to get sent to beans for his father and mentor, to the dismay of his mother. While heading towards the fight, he could sense that his father has grown much stronger while he was away. He would question himself if he would be strong enough to fight him with this newly required power he obtained. Raz would begin to lose control of the fight as he used up a lot of his energy after his little rage moment and King Vegeta would begin beating on Raditz. As he was prepared, an attack meant to end him, but before he could throw the attack, he is sent flying away by a kick from Vegeta. Vegeta did tell Raditz that if he is the king of their race, he must be stronger than these wannabes. Raditz would warn Vegeta that his father and Nappa attained a form of power from magic, but Vegeta laughs at his idea. He tells Raditz he knows exactly what this is, as he too recently reached this level of power. He explained it that it is not a Super Saiyan form, but something like the Akari form, he has but more perfected. Like if he mastered the Azaru form fully and would begin charging up, as when he powers up, he has fur all over his body and looking the same as his father. The power everyone sensed from Vegeta was near to his father. His father laughed saying that he may not be a failure after all, and would offer his son to join them as Vegeta would scoff at the idea. He tells him that he will end him happily after what he did to him, and now even more with obtaining power in a way that required someone else rather than him getting it himself. The fire would begin and they would be creating massive pressure waves each time they collide, and this power would catch everyone's attention. Goku would use this chance to attack Nappa when he is not looking, but he wouldn't be able to do much, as Nappa would grab a hold of Goku and slam him onto the ground, as he would quickly head over to the battle to aid King Vegeta. Now with the two on one, Vegeta is struggling trying to fight both of them off. Kakarot would grab a hold of Nappa trying his best to aid Vegeta, as then Vegeta would yell at Kakarot to cut off the tail of Nappa. And without question, he would do so. And then Nappa would regress back into his base, as both him and Kakarot would fall down to the floor hurt. The fight between son and father continues, and after learning about the tail weakness, they both aim to cut off the tail of each other. The others would manage to take out all the Majin Saiyans, but they were all tired and injured to help out Vegeta in the fight with his father. The fate of the planet is left on Vegeta's shoulders, if he doesn't win, then everyone is doomed. They also seem to be on equal ground, but Vegeta does know that if he doesn't win soon, his body will run out of energy, as he cannot hold this form forever. They exchange blows after blows, then King Vegeta would shoot a Ki Blast right in Vegeta's stomach, as it leaves a burnt mark on his stomach, but he would use this chance to cut off his father's tail, which would turn him back into his base. Vegeta would tower over both his father and Nappa, holding his stomach where his injury is. He charges up a key attack ready to take him out for good, but before he could, a sword pierces right through his chest as he coughed out blood. Everyone is shocked as they look to see that it was Dobura, as Vegeta falls down reverting back into his base as he holds his wound but is quickly bleeding out. Babidi laughs maniacally, saying that their fight gave them so much energy for Boo that it even made him stronger, as they look to see Boo, Babidi, and Dobora standing over everyone, as Babidi is happy since he used everyone to be able to get what he wants, and now with all of them injured, no one can stop him. Trunks continues to fly as he's heading back to the battlefield, but he feels everyone's energy is going down, as he powers up trying to go as fast as he can so he can save everyone, as he has a bag of sensor beans on him. And that's where I leave it up for now. Tell me what you think about what I did with the ninth part and how I did with the Majin Saiyan Saga. Will Vegeta survive? How will the fighters face off the Buu and Boo? What about Trunks? Will he be able to make it back to help everyone? What could have happened differently? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below. I would love to hear them. If y'all are interested and enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Hit notification bell to be alerted whenever I post another part. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next part. See ya!